Hey, welcome back to the Metropol Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. This video is a bit different than maybe the videos you've seen before on this channel. This is not exactly a deck dive video. This is just some honest gameplay for a deck that I didn't build, but I like a lot. This Thursday, there's not going to be a stream. We're out at Mansion Runner, so I recorded some footage on a Monday night playing some Jotegi.net casual, and that's a couple games now going to follow this. Now, this deck is sick. This is Jantuno's deck. It was played in the finals of Fight Club. The uninitiated fight club has been this like uh, kind of been going for a couple months now, and it was a team tournament between a lot of very competitive Netrunner players. And the finals just ended last weekend. You can watch it. Link is in the description on Axie's YouTube channel. The final final game was about two hours long, which is pretty wild. Now, this list, I actually really like it quite a lot. It's a bit fundamentals driven, which I appreciate that focusing on very simple interactions, but making sure you're doing them as great as possible. And it features some of the strongest cards from the upcoming set Rebellion without rehearsal. Now, different to a deck dive, if you want to read more about this, I highly recommend. Shout out to Tuno for posting it. It did a great write up in the background. It's behind my head. Find the link in the description. You can read up a bit more. But just so that we're on the same page here, we're playing Asa Group, which is an HB identity that gives you that double install first time per turn you're installing something. The second card can't be an agenda. And very importantly, once per turn means your turn and the runner's turn. If this fires one, you install a card, you can install another non agenda card in or protecting that same server. The big thing with Asa a lot of times is you'll be building a lot of different small remote servers, put something behind it, ice it up for one single click. And that's because one of the most powerful cards here is fully operational. A card that echoes as many times as you have those ice servers with things in them. And this can be just a massive swing of tempo when you suddenly gain four credits, draw four cards, jam something in that remote server. This is really quite strong. Now, the new cards we're focusing on is Holloman. Mind you, a very powerful card from the last set. You've probably seen it do its work already. And the idea with these HB decks is a lot of times you use other cards to kind of speed up the scoring of your agendas. Classically, we saw a lot of things in HB like Seamus Launch and some Asa decks. You're seeing things like Wage Workers, even the new Cohort Guidance Program. This one's all in on Holloman as the way for us to score out never advanced 5-3 agendas and even score out 4-2 agendas that are on the table and have a click left to jam the next agenda, which is really, really powerful. It is a bit expensive, but it does speed the game up. And this guy, while it can only be trashed for two credits, is going to be coming back a fair bit. We have a lot of recursion in the deck, especially things like a Blade of Barrier. We have three copies of these. So once we're on threat three, just about any ice res can mean the Hollow Man just sneaks back in. We're also playing a single copy of Tributary. This ice is very, very powerful. If we can get this res, that ice install triggers the Asa group ability. It means we can't install an agenda behind it, but we can just very quickly build board states and save credits on ice installs. And then finally, we have Working Prototype. Kind of a must trash asset if this gets out of hand, you know, five power counters does sneak up a bit faster than you think. And then returning a resource back to the top of the runner's deck while gaining six credits can be a massive swing. Otherwise, the deck is relatively straightforward. We have some economy assets. We have only two defensive upgrades with the Man of Garm Skunk Works and then just a lot of the best ice in the format right now. I do love when the runner smashes into an MIC, but hopefully we res a bit cheaper with Vovo. And that's this deck. Again, we have some gameplay coming up. It's relatively straightforward, but I think there's a high ceiling here to play this as clean as possible, because when you're playing HB decks like this, you want to be as efficient as you can. And uh, when it works, oh, it feels so great. Very, very smooth. Shout out to Tuno for posting this list. It's an absolute treat. And shout out to its team that did fantastic throughout the whole event. A real treat to watch throughout Fight Club. If you like this sort of video, mind you, this is a new format. If you have any sort of feedback, this is about an hour long video of multiple pieces of gameplay. If you think they should be shorter videos and just more of them, let me know what you think, because this is the format we haven't really done in a while. We usually do deck dives and focus, and this is more of a this is someone else's deck and I'll show you what it, I think it can do. Uh, again, we only played our first games on a Monday night, so we're not going to play it perfectly. The ceiling on this deck, I think, is quite high. On that note, if you want to take a second to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. It helps the Metropolitan Grid grow a heck of a lot. Quite appreciated. And with that, enjoy the games. All right, we're playing some JNA casual. We picked up this is Tuno's list from Fight Club. It's an Asa group, Holloman. Looks really fun. Very demand, uh, very commanding performance in uh, the finals of this deck. Looked incredibly powerful. Now we're playing against Sable. We want to ice up centrals. Uh, we have a tributary. If we get that down, it's hard to make Sable do Sable stuff. Our opening hand, double drafter, no real good ace install. I think we're going to mulligan this for something a bit more tempo positive. Not a great hand there. Uh, we can always do Vovo, Ablative, Spin Doctor, and Open. We want to ice up HQ at a minimum. Hedge one's good. If that's the case, we probably don't commit to the ace install this turn. We do my virus on HQ. So uh, a boy of might be good enough. So I think we just do a virus ablative on HQ. Actually, Vovo ablative is fine. Vovo ablative hedge fund. We can draw ones then for a better piece of ice. OK, that's a better piece of ice. And we don't want drafter on HQ. Drafter on our mode server, drafter on R&D is fine. So we can do. Do we need a hedge fund this turn? Yeah, we probably should. If 
we leave R&D open, we don't have to res it. So like next turn, we'll probably still be on five credits. We'll see who the mark is. HQ mark. We can kind of let that go through. Well, we can't actually because of Bobo. So like we'll be on four credits. Next time we can do credit hedge fund. Uh, all our agendas in R&D. So I do value the drafter there, but immediately we don't want to res the drafter here on turn one. For bounty, carpe diem, we're going HQ. Okay, we might as well get Vovo up to work. From then, he can go on to R&D. If you run R&D last, click here. We can get the spin doctor on the table. It's not fantastic. We probably won't res. I wonder if we want to just get an archives mark. We probably do just want to get a tributary sooner than later so we don't have to deal with this. Alarm clock. Okay, cool. HQ pressure built in. They double click through an ablative. It's kind of okay for us. Uh, we actually could slow down here and not build out. We could do credit hedge fund MIC on HQ. The virus on top of the Vovo seems fine. It looks like a Chrysium or something better. I think we're okay with that. Sometimes we just want the padding in HQ, but this looks like a Chrysium grid or like a mana garm. Uh, Vovo will stay there. Now, if Drafter fires, at least we can get Spin Doctor and then pull the hedge fund back. So there's a real threat there. HQ still the mark. Alarm well, Clock lets you bypass the first one. So if you want to bypass the MIC, that's fine. You're going to lose two clicks anyway, so why not? But then the Blade of Will end the run. So it's a bit harder for Hector to, to get into here. This is like the slowest in terms of like building a remote server I've ever played in Asa. Uh, definitely want to respect Sable a bit, but we just don't have anything we want to put in a remote server, so that's totally fine. If you can lock down centrals, like the Sable economy engine does slow down a fair bit, so we want to do that before we push out a remote server. Now, on a remote server, we generally want a defensive upgrade, two pieces of ice. It might take a couple turns before we score out. That's okay. Just dirty laundry and archives, three credit econ card, and class act. Nice. All right, drafter spin doctor. We could also do a virus spin doctor. I don't think we have to ice up the spin doctor, so we could just do iceless spin doctor. Now, you do want to ice it up because, um, I think Drafter on R&D on Archives is a bit better. You want to ice it up because of fully operational? Okay. Tributary is really good. That's really, really quite good. So we'll do Drafter Rashida next turn. I think we just want to get Tributary in Archives. You think they're going to run it? We could do Tributary Rashida and hope the Tributary gets res. That's probably fine. That's like the best possible res for us. Like I know that we're sacrificing Rashida for it, but if the Tributary goes off, uh, the Tributary is going to change the whole game. So we just need to force the Tributary res. Maybe that's a good reason to put on archives because if the, you roll the mark there, R&D, bravado, ooh, nice drafter. So hedge fund in hand, we can put something on the table. We can do a virus into drafter. We can also just drafter archives. I think we want to drafter archives. I think that's good enough for us. There's a lot of agendas in there. Couldn't not steal Ikoa. If they go back, they have to deal with the drafter, let alone we can spin doctor. Yeah, I'm not sure if we want the drafter here. We kind of do. We just want some ice there. Something cheap would be fine. Miss Bones. All right. If you want to check the tributary here, you're going to get it rezzed, which is fine. We do appreciate that. We'll be down to two credits. Uh, we are going to res this. Rashid is going to go down for free. So now tributary is online. Choose a piece of ice to install. We can just get this on the table. It has to be on something else. So we might as well. It's whether we ice up the spin doctor. If we're icing up the spin doctor, it's not particularly stunning. We'd rather keep this for a double install next turn. Uh, but Rashida, alive and well. I'm kidding. She's gone. <laughs> okay, we need to get our money up here. Powers that be. All right, daily casts. So, any run gets a tributary, so we don't have to worry about alarm clock. We can just do triple credit here. Otherwise, we're pushing to remote server and we're just basically trading a run. I think we can just do triple credit. It's pretty uninteresting. That's the best we have. Vobo will stay there. Maybe resing this tributary was a mistake. But I think we're doing okay. Like, they don't really have a lot of money working here. And then their, you know, their economy is kind of attached to that pretty heavily. And now Tributary is up. The game is entirely different. It's Tributary into Draft. <laughs> That's a lot of damage. And you can't, like, Boomerang. You can't inside job. It's really tricky to play around Tributary. So now it's really hard to just, like, poke R&D. We'll see what the Breakers are again. We still have to build a remote server. Gatekeeper's quite nice. Um, not good to Boomerang, but a good to, like, an early Unity. And we're not flooding. So R&D is where the game is here, for sure. Tributary fires, we could ice up R&D. Boomerang and R&D. Think they're running here. Yeah, forgetting about Tributary, last click. Uh, uh, it's always there. Very easy to forget that. So fire all, we're going to draw a card. Offworld Office. So we can install from hand to get a Gatekeeper on the table. And then install behind it with a Mavirus. Uh, they can't steal Ikoa here. The drafter is going to be broken. I think we want to build the remote server. Next turn we'll do Mavirus. We also can put this on HQ, but we're pretty good for now. Oh, they have a click left. I forgot about this. They're going to get click back for their mark. So um, I thought they couldn't uh, contest this. They can. Yeah, I thought he couldn't contest this. He definitely can. 
Unseen holding. Info bounty, two clicks, boomerangs back. So now he can run this. Yeah, it's just some a virus. We could residue damage, but we need a hedge fund. Purge. Yeah, that's probably not right. Getting the gatekeeper on the table is fine, though. Second gatekeeper as well. So we've seen boomerangs. Inside jobs might be there. Let's draw once. Okay, Ico on hand. Uh, we can keep that in hand. It's pretty safe there. We probably want to do a hedge fund. I guess we can draw once more. Hedge fund. Okay. So our remote server Braun would be good. Vovo's fine. So the big thing is with Ace, the second card can't be an agenda. So if Tributary fires, it's not what we can do ice into agenda, but hopefully we get something like working prototype. Even just the powers that be on the table is annoying. As much as Miss Bones is. You know, and deal with most of that stuff. 15 credits, not too bad. We're going to build a remote server. <laughs> just do wait. A defensive upgrade will help. And we're hard to pinhole with this table. Mystic. Nice. Hermes. Okay. Good. Hermes might be an HQ problem. All right. Multi munitions. This is a neat inclusion in the, in the deck. Trash an installed program. If you're not expecting that, you're not expecting that. Uh, some good subroutines on that. If we move Vovo over, we can actually push for this. The question is, what is our push? Like, do we do off world office? We don't have any fast advance in hand. Like, we don't have Holloman. The deck doesn't have Seamless. So we'd have to install advance, advance, and then just hope we hold against Hermes. It's pretty difficult. I think Lyshan into Gatekeeper is a pretty sick server, though. 12 credits. He might have breakers. Uh, so we have to figure out what we want to do here. We can double stall powers into Gatekeeper. We just want the card draw, I think. We can draw once. Okay. And my C for the remote server is also pretty good. If we res a Lyshan, right? We scoring server Gatekeeper Brawn is pretty good. Gatekeeper MIC is also pretty great. Do a Lyshan here. If we have to res it, we'll res it. I don't think we need to move the Vovo over. At some point now, like, we've gone through 19 cards. We haven't scored. So you think there's at least three agendas on HQ, which is true. I think if Hector conducts the Spin Doctor, like, we might want to draw there to discard the Iqua, but I feel like it's relatively safe in HQ. And this is where it's going to be hard to run, right? Because that Tributary. And the Tributary now installs cards for free. It installs Ice for free, at least. And that helps, because we definitely want to be getting two or three tall servers. Yeah, there you go. So move tributary, sure. So you can bypass that, which means MIC will connect. We did pull the tributary off of R&D. There's some value to that. But now if you want to double click through the tributary, we're totally fine with that. Fire all. Cool. So we'll draw a card. Install a piece of ice. I think we want the MIC on from the gatekeeper. We'll just do the brawn to stack different subtypes. So the MIC now is going to be resed for four. Just going to jack out. Yeah. At least it's the clickless way to move the tributary over. That's not too bad. So the question is, like, does Boomerang run R&D get a Hermes bounce do good damage to us? And kind of does. Drawing up a class act. We have two Mana Garm, two Holloman, two Vovo. We just want upgrades with the remote server. It makes this, like, harder to read. Yeah, Spin Doctor's going to go down. I honestly think, well, it doesn't really tax much out of them from them. It's nice to have a Rashida around. Because then we have a Rashida, and then Drafter does something. So I'm actually going to shuffle back my Virus and Hedge Fund. I'll keep the Rashida there, just so Drafter has some teeth. This also means that they don't have a pinhole server. Not that it is a pinhole server. Like, we can just crack the spin doctor. They might not check this. If they run last click, it's not too bad. Like, we can't really afford to pay three for this. Mind you, this with Vovo is good. Maybe, we, yeah. Oh, two Tacopi coming down. Looks like they're going to put down a breaker sooner than later. Powers that be doesn't do anything. Holloman. Okay, cool. So we can do Holloman off world office. Beside Brown, Gatekeeper, we can move the Vovo over. That seems okay. Tributary's there to play as well. So we can install it, install a piece of ice. So we can do Gatekeeper Holloman that drops us down to eight. It's an expensive line. I think we have to ice up R&D a bit better. So let's do server three, server three. We'll get this on R&D. We might get some HQ pressure here. That's an issue. And then enter, we'll move Vovo to server three where we kind of need him a bit more. That's the thing is like tributary always beats an alarm clock because no matter what, they can never get through the a a blade of, if they use it immediately. 14 credits. Offer it into... Holloman's kind of expensive, mind you. Like, we spend six, seven to get seven back. We fire powers at B. Move tributary, yeah. So this is probably just going to be an actual genuine HQ run, which is kind of good for, for them. That being said, if MIC trades most of their turn, fire all, cool. We take it. Draw one card. So we can do MIC spin doctor into a new remote server. That's okay. We can also put it on this server, thinking. We have a new server that allows us filter draw. I like that. As much as obviously it's two agendas in here, but they can't get through the blade of barrier now. So I don't, this is just to, to eat the tributary. Double jack out there. 
So let's see how they contest this remote server. We can res Braun, we can res Gatekeeper with Vovo. We just need a bit of money here. Actually, if they pressure this remote server, we're not in a happy spot. We have only 10 credits and a lot of our ice isn't resed. Sometimes like people don't want to run the Vovo server because it's a Vovo server. And then it feels like you're giving them value. Bravado, going archives here. We could res the drafter. Uh, archives is the mark. If drafter fires, we get a Rashida on the table. Don't really have anywhere to play the Rashida though. Ugh, 22 credits. Good money. Carmen, okay. So that breaks drafter for four. Not very good, but they have money to burn. Running this. So it's a spin doctor. We're not going to res. We'll res the spin doctor. Uh, if they trash the spin doctor, he uses Miss Bones. We can allow them to trash the spin doctor. We can always just bring it back with the powers that be. Okay, Mana Garm's here. So we have to think what we want to do. If we res Holloman, again, it's six, seven to get seven back. We res the powers that be. It allows us to install like the Vitruvius in the remote server with the Mana Garm. That's pretty good. We can also get a spin dog on the table and we can respond to whatever they bounce. So we'll res this. We'll res this four. Advanced score. Still at nine. We'll do off world first. Powers that be. So we can get a card from the table. A card from hand. This will eat our Asa install. We kind of like our Asa install. We don't really have anywhere to put Rashida. So I think we do from hand. I think we just do Vitruvius in the remote server. Uh, we can't really afford to score next turn. So I think we do Rashida with the Managarm. And then we use this click to put the Gatekeeper back on R&D. He knows this is a Rashida because of the powers that be. So we'll see what he does here. Yep. And we'll just put the Gatekeeper back on R&D. Uh, move Vovo? No, we need to keep Vovo there. The Alarm Clock's probably going to send into the Tributary again. We kind of appreciate the card draw. Mystic, no twinning just yet. Mark is R&D. Okay, so Gatekeeper might do something here. We raise the Gatekeeper. We just want to make sure we don't overextend on server three. Looks like Hector's just drawing up. Seven cards in hand looking for breakers, I imagine. We have to remember there's a defensive upgrade on HQ, so that does change how he plays. And once we get our next agenda, like uh, Vovo was going to help rest Manigarm and some other stuff. Man, the Lyshan actually on this remote server is kind of cool. Draw, draw, gonna discard a card here. Let's see if he can play. Career Fairy will get two cards out of hand. The Kobe's one less influence than Turbine, right? There's some breakpoints that does hit a bit better. Daily Cast, okay. Discarding a Diversion, nice. So Rashida fires. We would love to hit a fully operational here. Move Holloman. Oh yeah, we could move Holloman to somewhere safe. I think it's pretty safe there. Okay. So we have no economic plays in our hand. Our deck contains two hedge funds, three fully operationals, and then three working prototypes. So we're a bit unlucky there. Uh, with 16 credits, he can maybe push here. We can install. I think a Vovo on R&D might look fine. We can also do a Mana Garm on R&D. Thinking. Uh, we have a double install here. A Blade if we really don't want to be resing anytime soon. We have Barrier to Code Gate. Most of our sentries are accounted for two drafters on the table. We have no other sentries. So Vitruvius with a counter. Like scoring on Vitruvius costs a click and four credits. Like that's kind of sick. It's kind of messed up. Uh, so I do think we put Vitruvius in the remote server. And then just an ablative in front of it is like a cheap way to beat inside job. I guess Tributary is also there for that. I just wish we had another play. Like we had anything else to put in server five. Like a working prototype would be pretty sick. Uh, obviously fully operational here would be pretty metal. I think we're going to take a credit here. Throw this. Maybe the ablative. Move Vovo? No. So this is going to be expensive. Let's see what happens. Mark is HQ. We still have MIC on. Saleable drawing. Okay, so we're not alarm clocking. So Tributary is still alive. If you want to inside job boomerang their mode server. We still have Managarm as much as he has 18 credits. So Managarm is not going to hold forever. But the tributary is going to keep him out a bit. We only have 12 credits, right? It's hard for us to res all our ace. You can get some aggression off here. The Lation is broken for, well, if we pick barrier code gate, we res it for three, gain back one. Like, no, probably not. Unless it's last click and then maybe. But if it's last click or second last click, yeah, we want to be second last click. I don't think that's a good trade for us. Draw? Definitely looking for breakers here. Mutual favor, you can just play, you know? You don't need to click. But a lot of these decks are sometimes only on one. Boomerang, okay, we're going R&D. Pinhole, sick. Mind you, 
This deals with the Holloman. We could have got another Holloman on the table. We'll move Tributary over so we can actually install another Holloman on the table, which is hilarious. Fire, we'll draw. Rashida, okay, wow, we can get a Rashida on the table or a Holloman on the table. Holloman seems more important. So we have to install an ice, so we'll do this on server three. Put another Holloman there. Continue movement. Uh, if we res the gatekeeper, the gatekeeper's rezzed, and then we don't have a gatekeeper. This is the last click. This is not the mark. We can just strand the boomerang here and install on the blade of on top of it, trashing the boomerang. That's probably for the best. Uh, we can also res the manic arm here. I think we can afford to like trade five credits. And you can't trash the manic arm. Like that's brutal. So this is four getting a Takobi charge. And then you have to pay five more and then you can't trash it. So this is a very expensive panel. It's a complicated board state. <laughs> Yo. -yo. So I'm assuming the Holloman goes down for Miss Bones credits. Yeah, they paid five. Wow. So they can access anything. They can access the powers that be. Vovo is Eddie. Whoa. Cool. That makes sense. We have no money. So we need to get the second Vovo from hand. Speaking of no money. Thought we'd draw fully off. That'd be sick. So we're going to haul him in for four. On Vitruvius. If we want to advance again, we get a counter. What does the counter get us? On this board state, not much. So I think we're just going to score, install Volvo Rashida, and repair. Ignoring all costs. So Volvo can come back. We can also just put an ablative. Ablative now does something. Um, HQ is going to be pressured. It's okay. The HQ run's not that good. Ignoring all costs. So we can do Volvo from a hand. So I think we just put an ice on HQ. Choose a non-agenda to install. These can be bounced, mind you. Excuse me? Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, I guess it uses our trigger anyways. Yeah, yeah, never mind. We messed that up. Okay, the MSC goes back. That's totally fine. So Vovo, we need to move over. So unfortunately, we messed up a bit. Yeah, we, we goofed that. So we'll just do server three credit. We'll res this Vovo and move over to server three. Now Vovo, mind you, reses the Holloman and the Managarm for free, which is nice because we've hit threat. And the boomerang is stranded on R&D. Seven credits. Again, very expensive pinhole. Mystic Daily Cast, Tributary is still there. We have ice in hand. So our next score is like put the Iqua in there and then we just pay, you know, that much money. Move the Tributary over. Yeah, we will. Just resing the Blade of Barrier for two is enough. It'll drop us to four credits. Is four credits enough to res a Gatekeeper? Yeah. Please get a fully op. Okay, Hedge Fund. Choose a piece to install. Uh, we can get another ice on top of this. We don't have a huge incentive to do it. Jacked out. Okay, cool. No ablative fire. Maybe we wanted ablative on server three. It actually is way, yeah, it's with Vovo, yeah. I think we messed up Vovo. Eh, not really. We're going to res it anyways. We didn't have to res it right away. So now with Braun, depending on what the next two clicks is, Vovo reses Braun for four. That drops us to two. Rashida gets us back out of it. Okay, so he's drawing now. Inside job is a bit difficult. Because we can't afford Brawn and Gatekeeper, it cost us five. Oh, we can actually. Because this is four, this is one. Vovo is really good. I do like Vovo a lot. Now spending money on ice is kind of a, a nice little privilege you can have. As long as you keep giving this guy some mint tea. R&D is definitely the weak server here. It costs four credits. And that's still a lot. The next break from Takobi Carmen's a bit cheaper. And so like... If there's an axis on R&D, we'll pre-res the Rashida so that if a Hermes gets a bounce. We haven't seen a twinning yet, which is like fantastic because Wake and Plant's not going to work against this board state. It's all about twinning. Again, we have like three fully ops, three working prototypes, a Nico campaign. We have a lot of things to go like slightly horizontally that are just not like holding on. We have to remember that we have this that looks a bit scary too. We could have pre res it with the Vovo. Um, not very good. But we're looking potentially to win next turn. If it's like Rashida, Fire, Mutual Favor, let's see what the breaker is. Pura Pira, okay. And good money coming in off of Sure Gamble from Mystic. Yeah, so the curb here is in hand. Rashida fires. Uh, no, Holloman does move. Excuse me. All right. Woo. There's all our money. There's all of our money. So what do we want to do here? We want to install the Ikua. We can put the MIC in front of it. And then I think we can just do hedge fund, hedge fund. I don't think there's much more to it. Right? Like you have to deal with Brawn, Gatekeeper. Ikua Managarm. The weakest server is R&D, but we have a Managarm in R&D. 15 credits, maybe? The thing is, like, you don't know what to bounce here. Well, you, you do. It's probably this.
So let's see if this holds out. We could have done fully operational for a hedge fund's worth of credits. It's two, four, six. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, no, it's slightly more money. Yeah, we could have uh, fully opt for, again, we pay one, gain six, so it's five. Yeah, we'd have one more credit. I don't know if that matters. It might. It might not. Class act draw. Three clicks left. Mind you, MIC does take a click. Manic arm takes a click. Ikoa takes a click. Uh, the mark is R&D, which is the best mark, I think, this turn for Hector. By a mile. The best mark. We need to score out. How much money do we need? We need... Four, five, six. We need six credits to score it. Chesva, okay. Move tributary. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. Mind you, if tributary fires, like drafter is more expensive to break. Uh, it doesn't hit a break point, actually. It's the same. Do we want to draw? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's good. That's not on the top of the deck anymore. Uh, we could thin out HQ. I think we could do drafter working prototype. It doesn't really matter, does it? So we can make this one run or two runs. We're looking at three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's only six points in 14 here. If we res this, we still have enough money. It's a gatekeeper. You can break it once. Eight strength gatekeeper, pretty good. Uh, drafter again, you break for four. Two with Chesva. Oh, boomerang charges to Kobe. That's really sick, actually. I think we ended up saving money. We saved uh, two credits. Doesn't really matter on this turn, I don't think. Because with the MSC and their mode server, uh, we're going to get click back, actually. Mm, so it's a bit tricky. Don't steal, it's a single. Nothing. Managram goes down for free with miss. Bones. 10 credits info, but he's still two clicks. Don't know how Hector can deal his remote server. Maybe he can run HQ, but the MIC here is going to drop us to six, and then the gatekeeper here will probably seal the deal. Uh, Ikoa now is getting harder to deal with. Kurapir is down. That is it. Last click. We can just end the run here. So again, I just want to make sure we're not messing it up. We need four, five, six. Credit perfect if we res the MIC here. Just not breakers soon enough, unfortunately. Third turn? No. Call them in four. Yeah, we definitely should have uh, fully opted that turn. Advance, advance score. Oof. Hard to get access there. Good game. Not a lot of accesses. Thanks for the game. How many accesses did the runner get? Ten? Including, like, an archives run at some point. So, yeah, I got some ice up. I got the ice up. Fast enough. Tributary is just a nightmare. Yeah, so we just ice up centrals, keep them out. Hector still got two good bravados, all the diversions throwing out. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> Darius side. Good game. All right, we're playing against Captain Padma. Padma has some really strong pressure. Uh, Brawn on HQ is pretty good. We can do Nico Ablative as our Asa, and we can leave like an off in hand. We can also like Spin Doctor for more options. We can't really afford the Brawn. Generally, you want something on a R&D that like has a bit of a face check. So Pudma can't just like bounce into it to like charge, I don't know, Melandre Gem or a uh, catalog or some nonsense like that. Uh, so this hand's like, okay, I think we can keep this. All right, Manigar, nice. So we want to keep R&D a bit tight. We can't really afford the brawn, so we can let R&D open for this turn. I think we might just want a blade of on HQ and then we can do brawn Nico. We can't really afford the brawn early. So I guess we do a blade of Nico and protect that. We do credit ice this on HQ and just hope that the offworld stays in hand for a turn. I would be surprised to see like any pressure from HQ besides maybe burner. And I don't actually know if burner's caught on that much. We could have drawn with spin doctor first. That actually might have been better. Getting this on R&D, we have to be able to afford to res it, which is not the easiest thing to do. But maybe if the Nico fires, we can do it. Uh, barriers are not that easy for, uh, for a lot of shapers to deal with. I don't know if pressure spikes seeing that much play. Telework, okay, cool. Boomerang, nice. Ooh, aggressive. Uh, some images not loading. That's okay. You see the text there. It's an ablative into a Nico. We could actually strand the boomerang, but we're going to need to jam something in this remote server next turn. So boomerang's nice to know. Nico trashes for two. You got to trash that. Yeah. Cool. Boomerang's back in. Money's not good. Now we could do Managarm Offworld. I think we actually do start Managarm Offworld and then we do Spin Doctor. Uh, we actually can't score this out too easily without the deck doesn't have seamless or wage workers. It's all hollow men. But I do think it's feeling pretty good on top of that server. And then we'll do this in a new remote server just because we want the double install. And that's a bit ugly. Uh, that is a bit ugly. I think we'll just ice, H ice HQ, I guess. Next turn, we might like do credit, credit, advance the off world. I don't know what's going to take on three credits. It'll be six credits with the telework. It might be tricky. Daily cast, daily cast. Okay, cool. Money, but not card draw. So also I might not have a lot of options in hand. Ooh, powers that be is pretty good. We can get that on the table. Credit, 
advance. That means we can replace the off-world with the Nico. That would put us back in the game, I think. Uh, but let's see here. We'd be kind of worried if it's like a trick shot or something like that on four credits. Like maybe you're worried about a draft or an R&D, but we haven't seen any charge targets from Pudma. Um, Laundry J is totally possible. We have to afford to res this, unfortunately. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose some points. So that's going to slow us down a turn with the off-world. Now R&D is wide open. It's okay. We're holding six points across the table so far. I wonder what you see here if you're trashing something. I don't think there's that much you can trash. With the daily cast, you de definitely can. Okay. Access, no trash. Nuka coming down. That's a charge target. So we're short a credit to score at the off-world. Oh, working prototype. That's sick. Uh, let's... We can't do a lot here without money. Nuka, mind you, is a charge target. So we probably need to do... Just credit, credit, credit. We can stall prototype, use prototype. It's two clicks for two credits. And then we have a prototype on the table, which is actually kind of fine. Because either he has to deal with it, and if not, we're going to res the powers that be anyways. And so it's going to give us something else uh, that, again, maybe he has to deal with. This is a weird hand to play out. Let's see how easily Shaper can deal with Mana Garma Blade. 10 credits. No SMC so far. No Muse. Oh, Gabali, really cool. Damn cool. We're going to lose everything. What is this breaker suite? Sick. Wasn't expecting that. So Gabali is going to go through that. We're going to res the mana garm. So it's either all of his money to get in here and steal the off world. That's okay. We can push next turn. The working prototype getting a bit better. Powers that be is only when you score, mind you. So hedge fund. We can do draw credit credit. We probably just hit the working prototype. So let's draw for another ice. Another ice would be sick. So we might be okay hitting working prototype here and then just doing Vitruvius Mavirus and pushing again. Uh, I don't know if we have to take that risk. Let's draw again. That's a bit better. Let's just take the working prototype and see if we can hold on. We definitely just want to get Holloman Ice. Like, next turn's Hedgefin, Holloman, Agenda, Ice. Uh, any Ice, honestly. Literally any Ice. <laughs> uh, we've also gone through, like, what? 14 cards? And one Agenda out, so, like, HQ pressure should be happening soon. We're gonna have to res, res the Ice on R&D sooner than later. If they run, if he runs, he gets a Nuka charge. Like, that's not nothing. Oh, never mind, Nuka's gone. I wonder if it's like Melandrige and then use Gabali and everything else to uh, supplement that. The spin dart on the table also like matters for the cataloger. Creative. Okay, good money. Let's get an ice. Oh, come on, an ice. One ice. Okay, good enough. So let's see if this draws attention. Next turn, we'll do Holloman Offworld. The deck is running what? A bunch of ice. Poison Vile Nasha. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> it's really, really cool. So we res this brawn. The idea is that Kongamata goes through it. They see two cards. I honestly don't care if they see two cards, but we have to res this brawn sooner than later. I think we can't afford to. We just need all our money for off world. But that's a really cool Kongamata Poison Vile combo. I wonder if they're on Ashen to get the deck back together. MIC. Okay. So they can't break two ice. Mind you, they don't have to break Drafter. Uh, to put the Mana Garn back, that's kind of okay for us. So we'll do server one, server one, and just credit, credit, I think. Eventually we'll get the MIC there, right? Like they can't get through two ice with this rig. That's a really cool rig, mind you. Kangamon Gabali, we used to see back in the day, they break one subroutine, the first or the last. It doesn't really matter when you're going to poison vial through the rest of it and just charge poison vial. Very cool rig. So let's see if they have like trick shot or something here to see more. And then Nyasha sees two cards. So they can either charge one of these, probably the Nyasha, considering the poison vial is a bit ripe. Stone ship. Okay, cool. So we got to do a... Uh, Pretty big combo turn here. A tempo turn. Fully up. Okay. So res the powers that be. Or res the Holloman. We'll dump the counters on this. We'll advance this once. We'll score. We'll gain seven. Then we can do a double install here. So the double install will be in the remote server. We probably need to get, I think, a Nico Managarm. Oh, the Managarm and then a Project Vitruvius is probably the best. But we can't ace install the agenda. Ugh. So we'll do server one. And then not Asa. So the question is, do we jam? I think we just jammed the next agenda. This looks like two uh, defensive upgrades. It's not, but it looks like it. So let's see what they want to do here. Mind you, if they see the top two of the deck, right? They could just win. I guess. There's Ikuas and stuff in there. Uh, I wonder if a catalog is going to come down. Like, they have to deal with the Spin Doctor. They might forget. This has been on the table for a bit. Some people forget. Boomerang for the remote server. Love it. Uh, they're in. 
They can't trash the mana garm though. So we have to res the drafter. We might be a bit too aggressive here. We might have actually just wanted to like ice up R&D and hold. Because yeah, pushing their mode server is not that great. So it's very likely they can get in. I think we overextended. It's hard to read what they're capable of because I don't that haven't seen this before, but um yeah. Seems good. Fire all? Okay. So we'll add this to HQ. Then we'll put a Nico on the table. We can ice up the Nico. I don't think we want to. If we had a spin doctor, we can install over this agenda, which is like something you want to avoid. Double install we won't. So now the draft is stranded there. So they have to double click the mana garment if they want to trash this stuff. And so now if you double click through this, you're left with enough to sweep the server. We can spend three to do a net damage. We obviously don't want to do that. And now unfortunately he's on game point with Echo as an R&D. The prototype returning the telework to hand actually would be pretty sick. So like this actually is a target. So Holloman's going down. That's fine. Purge. Okay. Zero credits. Oh, he didn't keep, he uh, spent his credits on his clicks. So he can trash everything. Now putting the telework on top of the deck isn't fantastic. We're still going to res this Nico anyways, because click for six credits is pretty good. We could have put the MIC there. Okay. So we'll res the Nico. Managarm stays. So we can push the Vitruvius in the server. It's no, we can't. Uh, so we can do, probably do that. Putting the Telework top of the deck, like, gives more money. We just want six credits. So then we'll install server one and then this on top of it. So that's another powers that B combo. And the question is, do we ice this up? I think we have to. And then we just say R&D, the Braun will probably hold. Probably. Braun, mind you, with Poison was pretty bad. You just click through one and you get through the rest. So we definitely wanted something like an MIC. This is the only Braun in the deck. We're gonna have to triple advance score out Vitruvius. That's okay. We get a Holloman back on the table. That seems important. This would be a fun match if they got a tributary, right? Like it's hard for them to break a lot of ice. They'll just let it. Kangamato, they're gonna run R&D here, C2. Uh, this is worth resing. They'll probably click through it. We're on four credits. We might have ducked a bit too low. Could bounce off of that run server one, but then the mana garm, I think, does it. Yeah, okay. Kangamato, you can spend a click there. Now this means that they can. This means that you can steal Ikua, which is like how we lose the game. Uh, do we want to spin Doctor back here? No. Oof. Oh, good game. Oh, oof. Oh, yeah. I think the Vitruvius we lost in the remote server, that was on us. Hey, thanks. You too. That was a cool deck. Uh, that R&D hit there was like pretty unlikely. There is only four agendas in R&D. Uh, on that run, and he found two of them. He had to find one of the Ikwa, so it was like two and 30. Um, so I'll take that line. Or it's like C2 to C2 and 30, so it's not that likely we lose there in our R&D. Can we claw it back? Like, I'm not sure. It depends on what we draw into, which obviously that's a bit different. Ah, not a lot of agendas in there. That's a cool deck. All right, let's run that back. Okay, we're playing against Seb. I haven't actually played against Seb in a really long time. Uh, Ice Destruction can be quite strong. Archives are some power there for sure. So we want to kind of just like, Hold down the forward, make sure we don't overextend where a single Aqua Seras crew costs us the game. The hand's not good, this hand's much better. Uh, ooh, that's a good hand, I think. Best of luck, have fun. So, what Seb's gonna do, I think we have to ice up HQ, just to make sure we don't get hot pursued. that'd be pretty bad. Uh, so we can put a drafter on HQ, that's not good enough, really. We want an early Rashida, so we probably hedge and just double double ice. So we can do Rashida into Ablative, just for a cheap end the run. Like this lowest draft, if it eats the Aqua Seras crew, we're totally fine. And we can do a drafter on R&D, which... You hop pursuit through it. It's okay. We get a hedge fund back, right? Oops. I'm going to say on HQ. Again, we're playing around hop pursuit. I'll go from there. Seb, mind you, take a tag. So there's a bunch of tag taking cards. Rogue trading. That's okay for us. That's a pretty slow card in general. So their whole turn is like functionally gain six credits and stall a scrubber. Oh, buy a bands makes that a lot better, actually. If you just clear the tag manually, it's a fair bit worse, but that's a lot better now. Lots of working prototype off the top. That's good. Turns on drafter. Draw three, gain three. Okay, cool. So we want to ice up everything. MIC for R&D is pretty good. Uh, we can do prototype or probably a Nico in the server. So we want to build a second server. I'm new, so I'm expecting to get a grip on the game. Why would you say I would recommend getting on the GLC Discord channel? Yeah, if you're new to the game, go to Green Level Clearance Discord and say like add mentor. I'm trying to look for a game. It's a really, really good thing to do. So next turn, they'll probably do a rogue trading. So we can do Managarm, Nico in our scoring server, but that means we first want to do working prototype into, I'm assuming MIC, maybe? Okay, 
So we'll put Nico in here and then we'll put working prototype into MIC. Nico in here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll put this in server one. Uh, Braun on R&D, we can leave R&D open. Immediately there's all our agendas in there. Do we need a Braun on R&D? It's like, it gets worked around. Oh, Scrubber trashed the thing. That's why it was trashed. Uh, it gets worked around by Iru eventually. We can't really afford to res it. I think I'd rather have the Braun for the mode server. Oh, hey, little friend. Let's get it down there. Whatever. We have enough ice. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, of course. Oh, hey, little friend. Yeah, she does love HB. She's a big HB fan. Hey, Nana. She's a bit hungry. I think I can get a snack after this one. All right, rogue trading. Tag, Hannah. That's a nice way to clear the tag. Let's see if there's pressure in a remote server. That's a really nice way to get Hannah to work for you. It's like you use both of those. Admittedly, if you take a second tag here, Sebastian's turned off. So we're just going to clear the tag manually. So we res the prototype first. Mind you, if prototype can get offline or online, like returning Hannah back, like just returning stuff to hand for Sebastian is really annoying. Tributary is really good. So we can do working type tributary. Yeah. Yeah, why not? We'll see if that gets pressure. And then I think we're going to ice up the Nico. Uh, we can just hit this for three. We need the money. And then eventually we'll just pull whatever we get another ice. Botulist, okay, going for the MIC. That's nice. It's a Hannah. So the MIC is going to connect. We'll res this prototype into resing this MIC. MIC, we can fire one of the subroutines. You can lose your whole turn to get through here. Well, not your whole turn, two clicks. So it is a well-placed botulist. I can't show the art on it, apparently. But where one was two... Yes, actually, there's a chance mana the prototype is more important for this matchup. It goes down for free with Scrubber. Scrubber's nice. A lot of assets out there. All right, Spin Doctor. We can put that behind here. It's like just good enough. MIC botulist is like kind of annoying. Uh, it unfortunately eats our trigger, but there's no way around that. Res hits a working prototype. Okay, we have a Holloman. That's pretty good. So we can do Holloman Gatekeeper on server one. Uh, we probably should do that next turn. We might see some pressure on HQ here. Think Nico's going to fire next turn and we're going to get all our uh, value. We don't have magnets in the list. So botulists are going to go uncontested. No Mavir. Oh, two Mavirus actually. Excuse me. Uh, so I think we just do prototype. We could install the Holloman, res the Holotim prototype to return Hannah back to hand. Like that's honestly kind of interesting. Um, it shows a Holloman behind an ablative. We end up resing for four. Uh, I don't know. Returning the Hannah is pretty good. I just think if they hand into this working prototype, we're pretty happy about it. Let's just take the money. This really working prototype is real, but like with Sebastian's not, I guess, too bad. Botulus, nice. Yeah, that's good. Another tributary. At least it's Botulus, <laughs> but it is still tributary. So you can break the one subroutine that matters. But we'd like to have this thing rezzed. That's it. <laughs> Botulus lines up pretty well. Now, on other servers, the two subroutines are going to matter. So, plus two strength. Prototype's going to go down. <laughs> yeah, now, nah, sure. Uh, and then next turn, we'll jam Hollum and Gatekeeper, and hopefully we draw an agenda, because Nico's going to draw a card, too. So we haven't seen a Huaceres crew yet. No Chisel, either, or um, Devil Charm. Those are important. Never mind. Shouldn't have said that. Okay, Aqua. That's not the first agenda we want to score out. We can, but it's pretty expensive. We want something better. So we need to ice up HQ a bit better. Uh, we need to ice up the remote server maybe a bit better. So we can do Holloman MIC on server one and then just Gatekeeper on HQ. That's probably fine. We just want to make sure there's no server that's one ice that's just going to immediately explode. The Braun on RD is a problem, that's for sure. But Julie, okay. Cool. Oof, feels good. Actually, Julie feels pretty all right there. I know I like Julie and Seb. That feels good. Just a good way to make Seb a bit more uh, install runner on tempo. Rogue trading. Okay. I think we're happy with that. Draw. Come on. Please just an ice. Just an agenda. Do we do Ikua, Vovo? I think on this board set we do. Ikua's, Vovo's threat four. Ugh. You never want to score this one out early. There's a chance it's actually better just to overdraw and discard that thing. Because like we're going to end up paying. Yeah, that was not right. Because if we want to haul them in it out, it's like four, six, seven, eight. Like, it's way too expensive. Nuka coming down. There's a solidarity badge, so obviously there's going to be some stuff trashed. We're going to top deck like an off-world office or something playable. Okay. 19 credits, no breakers so far, MIC into ablative. Okay. If we res Holloman, that's six, seven, eight. That's too expensive. Let's draw for a better agenda. 
That's important. That's actually really important. So we probably need to pay the hedge fund. Like we have 15 credits, but we haven't resed anything yet. And then I think we just want to get the upgrade and uh, another ice on R&D. Uh, we should respect Eero. Actually, like an ice on uh, on our archives might be better there. Because I think Eero can come down eventually, but more importantly, like a privilege access here does a lot. Wait, did they float a tag? They floated a tag? I didn't realize that. I don't think we would have trashed anything. Leech? Yeah, that's why we have to ice archives. Yeah, drafters on archives was correct there. At least we have a Mavirus, so I don't think we're going to care too much. Just give us an agenda like a luminal? <laughs> Anything? We'll take an off roll. We'll take a Vitruvius even. Anna. Okay. All right. Well, we asked for it. Server one. Uh, oops. Undo click. Server one. Archives credit. We just want to make it as hard as possible to uh, gain any sort of forward momentum. Now, once the Aquas Harris crew comes comes down, every single ice gets deleted immediately with this double charm. So it's all about having a two ice server. Tributary, mind you, is pretty annoying. Uh, as much as it is like you know, botulist to death, <laughs> we can just like purge. Nuka, just install runner. Okay. Hopefully, we top deck the next agenda. There's Valentina, so she can clear the tag. We're not a threat three yet, but why not? Bonhar. Ooh, that's good. So Banhar Charm is two ice servers. It's always Iquas. Res, pay four. Vance score, gain seven. We could jam the Managarm Iqua. Don't really want to do it. If we don't jam, we draw, which we should have drawn first then. Draw. That's better. Drawing last click is a bit sus. We should have drawn first click for sure. Because now, like, well, I don't know if they're going to run. But uh, Breaker Suite's probably, like, Amakua. God of War? I think Amakua, like, we, I don't know. We probably would have seen fixed strength breakers by now, but 23 credits. Question asks how quickly that money goes. Valentina, clear tag. Yeah, I gotta remember. Even floating tags. Okay, so thinking. So the tributary is sick because it just eats Banhar, right? So now the next ice actually has to be broken. Uh, so you have to, like, bait out Banhar. Because Banhar is the first encounter, so you now have encountered a tributary. So if you thought you were going to Banhar through this, you're not. Break two, cool. We could have purged, it wasn't that good. Continue. Uh, so continue to approach. We'll res, res. MIC will do some good damage here. You have no way to get a tag clicklessly to install an Aquaceras crew. It hurts, yeah. Yeah, that gives you a tag though with this Hannah. Oh yeah, fire. All right, so that's a tag. So now we probably need a trash of Bonhar. It costs us a card in the hand, it's not random. Uh, trashing Manuel before we get to threat three also seems a bit important. Move Holloman? No. Ablative? Nice. Okay. So tributary MIC ablative. So now all that's set up. All we have to do is not move the tributary. So we'll trash Bonhar for sure. Cost us a card from our hand. We'll trash, I think, the Managarm. Put the Vitruvius in here, and I think we'll just do credit. We can get the Blative in front of the tributary. Too expensive. Like, this is where, like, swinging HQ can put some real pressure on us. We haven't seen an Aquas Harris crew. With this Nuka now, 17 cards left. We're probably going to see one sooner than later. That being said, still, two ice is a bit difficult. We would love to have, like, the powers that be so we can rebuild board state. But we can pay four to get the scored out, jam the Aqua, and we can win next turn, potentially. Like, it could be that fast. We just didn't draw any agendas. Maybe not the most exciting game, but Valentina, friend of a friend. Clearing the tag. So, friend of a friend, you can take the tag, install an Aquas Harris. Archives is iced up. We do have an Iqua in there. So if this Iqua gets stolen, it's a lot more work for us. A friend of a friend. Yeah, we're going to take nine credits on a tag. There's the Aquas Harris crew, the first of its kind. So the question is like, do you get rid of the tributary? Do you try and access centrals now? Well, you can see two. Clear tag. Yeah, you can't float tag. We'll trash us. That's a lot of money. So here, we'll see what gets devil charmed. It's probably the MIC, right? So thinking, we can trash your own MIC. We'd rather eat the Aquas Harris crew. Yeah, so it's zero strength, or minus two technically. Now you're going to pay two more cards to Aquas Harris crew. Okay. Continue. Uh, we got a res and a blade of here. Solidarity badge got a charge. Pretty cool. I don't think this card fires enough. I don't know. Like, you're not seeing a lot of I and I for imps. It's like mostly ice destruction. There's a fair bit of it. I don't know if it's that that much. Fully up. Okay, that's sick. Uh, because we can recover. 
So the question is, can they break tributary into ablative? There's honestly a chance that he can. So we'll score that. So then we can install Aqua fully opt for money. Like for what it's worth, the blade of is just kind of hard to deal with. So then where do we move Vovo? Vovo here lets us res the mana garment ablative cheaply. If we put on R&D, we can res them a virus cheaply. I think we're fine. And then next turn, if Holloman stays, Ikwa has six credits to score out. So comes down to how you think you can stop this. Holloman is, is kind of fast. It's not seamless, but it's even faster. <laughs> it's more expensive, but faster. Steel skin, just drawing. Again, this is where like Sebastian was like install runner sometimes is an issue. You can put off pressure, but most of your stuff is just on that side of the table. Um, I do think there's pressure decks, but rogue trading is not like the hot pursuit pressure deck. Lagu, okay. Devil charm. That looks like it's game. We haven't seen privilege access yet. That would actually put on a lot of pressure. One click left here. Just credit. Okay. Oh, there's an eye for eye. Sick. We have no cards in hand. I move Holloman. Okay. So Holloman. That's it. It's a strong card. Good game. I'm scared of Seb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that never fencing five threes is, is, is something else. Yeah. It feels good. Uh, it feels good. I think you'd have to put the pressure on because we can't actually res that much ice. But Vovo does make it difficult. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. hundred percent. That seems like it's a good sub, a good enough sub deck. It's just like the question is how hard is interaction? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I can't right. <laughs> this is next to nothing. Just Batu and Cruz. Okay, so with them, a virus, we're actually pretty safe. Because it's hard to like, that's the difference. It's like if you're relying on Batu and Cruz, just like little ablative berries are really, really annoying. Ash and Free Pete. Okay, so we have to just go fast enough. That's cool to know. All right, we're playing against Marbles. Ooh, Sable. How's this opening? It's not bad. We need ice on HQ. We have early like hedge fund, Vovo, MIC. Generally, we will like ice up centrals sooner than we push in our most server. If we get our tributary res, like the Sable matchup is kind of, you know, pretty good for us. We'll keep this hand. Best of luck, have fun. Marbles is great. She played some really me mean PE at Worlds. Got to meet her in person. We've done some casting together. So yeah, it's just a Monday night. We're playing some Jaina casual. It's going to be a bit more of a loose video because we're on holiday. Another ice for R&D would be sick. Uh, we're going to get the better one on HQ for sure. So we're going to do install, double install Vovo on HQ. This on HQ. Now, ablative working prototype is probably our push for the next turn. Uh, unfortunately, against Sable, we have a huge incentive to stop that mark. So now if it's a Vovo into MIC, that's a really, really good trade for us as much as we're holding two cards in hand. And hopefully we draw a nice soon enough to push working prototype out there. And that's like our uh, our next kind of push. Diesel looks like just good stuff. Sable so far. Let's see if this spicy. I know I've heard a lot of competitive players saying like Sable mark running stuff is really difficult with tributary in the meta because you just can't like run archives for fun to get two credits. And, you know, when that ice does fire, mind you, firing an Asa feels less busted than some other archetypes like an Ag Infusion at Teya. I think that's a bit more. Interesting. Daily cast looks like we're just going to see no aggression this turn. Daily cast. Oh, very cool. All right. We're playing against a Jaichinho deck. We just need to go fast enough. She's going to start her next turn on three credits. Not a lot. Uh, we don't have like border control or anything to stop, like Crazy Grid to stop central runs. But we just have to kind of like push the issue in remote super fast enough. So she has to discard two here. Inside job and diesel. Wow. Oh, those are weird, weird uh, discards. Not, not what we want. Not what we want. Not what we want. You know when sometimes you just win with Jai Chinyu when you get points? <laughs> it's gonna be slow start with no burst econ. Yeah. So what's in hand if like other Jai Chinyus you can throw out? Oh, this hand is awful. We do have three spin doctors. This is not like spinless PD, which is kind of a thing right now. Biobands, archives, not too bad. There's a couple things you can install with that. Yeah, we're gonna take that back. Credit first. Yeah, some of the breakpoints, especially if you see the things in your hand. Oh, just running archives? Just run? That's probably not right. <laughs> I don't think it's a mutual favor play. I think it's, yeah, buy a band's archives with two credits. So now you can install three credit cards, like another daily cast, maybe uh, Kurapira, like a breaker, but probably more econ here because you can't do much with no money. Yeah, there you go. Second casts, stack casts. Tell me if you don't like the stacks. I like the stacks. Another agenda. Ah, oh, working prototype. Oh, this is terrible. All right. Not like that. Not like that. We're just going to put these out there. Just keep her busy. 
Mind you, that's a lot of money. You just res one, res the other, go wild. Uh, we probably don't have to res both of them. So one inside job's out. So the decks are usually on like three inside jobs, sometimes boomerang. And then if this is like Sid, seven played a deck recently. And then one S Debrado. Uh, we haven't seen any copies of the wizard's chest yet, but we'll see if this is like stacking some Matryoshkas that we're going to see real breakers. Ah, it's stacking Matryoshkas. This might be Sid's list. That's okay. So there's no bits of bones. These remote servers might stay for a while. And if we can just res enough stuff, which we can get three counters on prototype, I don't know if we can get five. Like, uh, HQ run here is pretty good. Ablative. Uh, we're going to keep her out. It's the mark. This is not, like, very hard to break. Oh, hold on. Sorry. Oh, the question is whether we want to res prototypes. I don't think we do. I think she trashes them if we show what these are. Because we could have res this prototype, this prototype, res that ablative. Wait, that would actually maybe be correct. Because then this would be on one, two. Yeah, but she trashes the one with the more counters on it. Okay. This is not good. So we got to think how to get out thinking. Got to think our way out of this one. Uh, if we res the prototype, res the prototype, res the Vovo, one of them is on three counters. That's a lot of money. Let's draw once for a good double install. Okay. That's good. We want to get something on one server. You just need to make one server hard to run. And clearly the server we need to make hard to run here is HQ. So we'll put this on HQ. We'll put this on server two. And we'll just res and use this. Why did I res that? Uh, oops. Oh, we had a click left. It's fine. I forgot we drew. We still going to do that anyways to set up a fully out, but that's fine. Daily Cash, she's on 10. So here she needs like an inside job and two Matryoshkas. Uh, Gatekeeper Demo is pretty good. If the Gatekeeper fires, we're in a good spot. We might actually just want to like tempo out the Gatekeeper and hope that gets rezzed. But the question is like, I, I don't know. Some players just focus on centrals and never run their remote server. This is definitely not the hand you want. Yeah, nothing there. It's just, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Very kind. Just draw, draw, draw. Bravado. Going R&D for a single. It is the mark. You get the click back. So yeah, it's a free run plus three. Now again, there's not a lot of agendas in there. But now she can't run anything else. Imagine she just flipped down. She can steal a cool here. Trash the Holloman. Okay, that's good. It's a win condition. We didn't exactly. Yeah, we actually did want to draw that. There's the wizard chest. Okay. So. Vovo Zeddy. So what, how much damage can we do? We can res only four things on our own. So let's start fully off just to draw. Okay. So we can install Vovo, install Managar, and we can return the daily cast to the top of the stack. Uh, it gives her stuff to do. The problem is that we'd have to do Vovo and Managar in here, which I think is fine. So let's do this. I don't know how to play out of this besides like doing something weird. So now we'll res. Res. Oh, it's a unique Vovo. <laughs> Whatever. When in Rome. Ugh. I am, uh, did not do that right at all. Res this one. Then you res the whole farm. Ugh. <laughs> one more time. <laughs> I am tilting. We'll do server two. We can do this. Yeah, maybe. Res this one first, then I believe it was then this one, then this, then that, then this Vovo. Trashing this one. Gain six, return this to the top of the stack. Okay. Move Vovo? No, you're doing great, my friend. All right, we just got to slow her down. This prototype, she needs to trash. Shouldn't be that hard. Cost two credits. She got to run it. We're throwing a lot of money away. She's got to run it. She's not going to run it. If she doesn't play a resource, she played a resource. Uh-oh. I don't know. I think you have to run that. You can't play a daily cast into that, can you? Res? Oops. Uh, so now we're going to discard some agendas. It'll probably be Ikawa Offworld. And so if that's the case, we just want to click this one for three. And now we can begin to, like, for a future. Yeah, you definitely don't want to install the daily cast into the prototype on four. It's a disgusting swing. Like, it's like fundamentally us trashing or like putting a daily cast on top of the deck. That's like a nine credit swing. Sorry, 11 credit swing. And then we gain six. It's like a messed up swing. Archives is the mark. Bummer. Free spin Dr. Pop, basically. So she threw a one inside job. What else she got? If it's Sid's list, which it looks like it is, it's like one boomerang. Inside job. I think we're going for it. 
So we have to res both of these. That's fine. Oh, where is the gatekeeper? Prototype's getting stronger. Continue approach. This is gonna... She might land it, actually. Because she can Matryoshka through that, but then she has to play another thing going through this. If she does all this for one Matryoshka, obviously if she hits an agenda, which she's likely to hit an agenda. Uh, but this is kind of expensive. And then she has to, like, figure out a way to cheat through this ablative. Archives is the mark, so she can install another Matryoshka. We don't want to crack this. Losing Vovo is also pretty upsetting. All right. One in five. One in five. Damn, that was the best one. Okay, feels bad. Vovo going down, I assume. No, Vovo stays, cool. So now she has to like inside job R&D run archives and if she extends that many resources to get the first knife in, I don't think we mind that much. Or expends that many resources. Running archives first, this is sick, because if there's agendas, they go back into R&D. And then she has to either inside job or boomerang or debrado R&D. So you can install another Matryoshka. It's not that bad. Cost one credit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now the first knife, not scared. Now you can't wizard chest for the second knife. You can wizard chest for something, but I don't think we'll see a wizard chest that soon. So this you break for one, flipping one nesting doll down. Okay. Not a lot of agendas in R&D. Right? Right? It's a shame we can't shovel the hallman back in. We definitely want that. So hopefully we draw ice and we just do off-world install advance. Because uh, two ice re remote super seems fine. Oh, actually going for the wizard's chest here. Just for Hermes. Oh, that's cool. That means she, she might have another Jaichinyu in hand. So the first stab is in. She needs three of these. And mind you, this fires if she runs all three central servers. So we drew a Managarm. Not what we wanted. Now, Managarm on HQ is actually pretty okay. We only have to reza when it really matters. That will be annoying. So let's draw for... uh. Not that. So I think next turn we'll start with Spin Doctor. Let's put this out in the new remote server. And we'll just mana Garm HQ. And then next turn we can uh, move Vovo. I guess so. Uh, next turn we can start with Spin Doctor. She's only five credits here. In terms of economy, the deck eventually does end up clicking for credits. It has all daily casts. Mind you, they're hard to play on the sports state. We can seemingly get our working pro type up to four counters next turn. Um. One more bravado. No sure gambles yet. Archives is the mark. Carpe diem. Not too bad at all. We want to get a piece of ice there eventually. You run R&D for a credit. It's not too bad. The problem is like you generally want to set up more. Like another Jaichin unit coming down here would be a problem. Okay. So powers that be doesn't do anything. How? Why? <laughs> why is it like? Why are we like? Why are things like this? New remote server. Res. Okay. Bronze good. Bronze definitely something. So we can install this on server two. And now we can decide. If we push the off-world office, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think we just click for three here and keep the hedge fund as padding in hand. In theory, we should click this one, but this one we're going to overinstall in the next turn. Move Vovo? No. It's good. The question is, with two inside jobs out, how does she deal with the remote server? Oh, not... Yeah, two inside jobs out. Excuse me. There's the sort. Because Braun to Blade of is pretty good. Uh, Vovo into Managarm as well. Mark is R&D. So now she can pay a credit just to get an access. No clicks. Not bad. Uh, Hermes will do some work here, but if we're holding all the agendas, we know how strong Hermes is. Uh, mind you, running HQ does cost not too much. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Okay, that's a lot. It's just the bravados that I think will have huge tempo swings. So we can install advance, advance the offworld office. I think that's probably the light, right play. We're not actually that weak to Hermes here. Carby DM R&D. Ooh, that's good. We're not too super weak to Hermes. And then we can use powers that be to bring back um, Holloman and then we can't install agenda with it, so. We're struggling. We're definitely struggling. Oops, all agendas. Now, we also have to watch out, just like with breakers. What's it cost for Matryoshka to break a brawn? Seven. It's like in the realm of doable. Running the spin doctor. Um, we can let that go. We can bring it back with powers up if we want it. Or not having money is good for us. Like most of our runner games, your opponent not having money is usually pretty good for you. Uh, this one, she should, we should just res it for credit. Good, she's spending money. She's not trashing this working prototype. I guess she's just not going to play resources anymore. Okay, so. 10 credits. We can do install off world. Advance, advance. That's not good enough. Obviously, an HQ run means like the bounce happens. So we probably just do like prototype, prototype, install Vitruvius. 
But Trubies of the Counter gets us a fair bit. I don't know if she will run the remote server, right? Like she wants the Jaichinyo. That's how Jaichinyo works. Is the Vitruvius better? The Vitruvius gets us Holloman. That's a good card. We don't need more money. No double install. Uh, Vovo, no. You're good. So she's on 10 credits. She did spend 5 last turn. Let's get a bad mark. Archives, okay. I don't think the deck is on like Dirty Laundry. Question is, is she posturing? Now, once we hit threat four, that's when like you get interesting board states where like Esther Brado actually does matter. Singleton Hermes just like running R&D means we can, she can bounce what's in the remote server. So next turn we might do advance, advance. A third ice would be good because then you need a trick on top of the Matryoshka. The deck has six Matryoshkas, okay? So there's three more somewhere. She didn't discard any. No. So we were looking at one Bravado, one Carpe DM, two Sure Gambles for Burst Economy. I think that's it. And then Daily Casts are really hard to play until you deal with this prototype. All good. The Blade of Barrier 2, we want to kind of wait until we're on threat. Four, three, excuse me, three. Which for us is a bit hard. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. Thumbs up. Out of the game. Credit Earthrise. Whoa, okay. So that was keeping her out. So now here, we have a Gatekeeper. So I think we can put a Gatekeeper on R&D and just double advance Vitruvius. I'm pretty sure it's going to hold. Why are we double advancing? Just so that we can score this out and then repair. Ooh, Vovo? No. Uh, triple Icing HQ actually might have been more reasonable because that's where all the agendas are. The Manic Arm there does some heavy lifting. But she has five credits here, so she needs a sure gamble. Otherwise, it's just like bravado that gets out of this hole. It's turn 10. <laughs> uh, Tributary would also be sick. Tributary is really annoying. You just let it fire with, with Sable, but it obviously gives us a lot of flexibility. We have somewhere in, 20, in the next 24 cards. So we can do advance, advance, grab Vitruvius, install Vitruvia and off world next turn. Uh, Hermes, we probably have to actually respond to the Hermes bounce. MIC is also kind of annoying, right? Like you do have an extra click to spend, so you can spend your click on this, but it stops her from being able to like install knife from hand. There's a knife. Okay, so next turn she can get the second blade in. She tries really hard. So we're going to score and see what happens. Here is the counter. Hermes gets a bounce. I think the gatekeeper is the prime target here. That means we're going to discard a card. I think we can get rid of fully operational. Yeah, gatekeeper just goes back. We'll discard the fully up. Move Vovo? No. And then next turn we can use Vitruvius. We don't have to. We can just jam off world office, but we can use it for Holloman. If you install Holloman and then spend four for two credits, yeah, it's not actually worth anything. So next turn we'll grab Holloman, jam in their remote server. The deck does have one pin all threading. So if this is Sid Seven's deck, which means if we like grab the hollow and put it in the server too it might not like it might just die which is fine at least it spends time and money mind you if pinnels the archives mark oof that's not good okay matryoshka she can break three ice so inside job oh all they're all here whole party's here uh play swordsman or whatever now, 12 credits can we bait her into the remote server i think we'd like to bait her into the remote server i think we actually really would like to bait her in the remote server I just don't think she's going to go for it. I think she's going to Jaichin you this turn. So maybe that's the safest place. So she has 12 credits. She'll have four cards in hand, six cards in hand, excuse me. So Gatekeeper is really expensive unless she inside jobs it. It's four, five, six, seven. She has to inside job this. This is only, yeah, running HQ is like the thing that she'll probably do. So I think we just need to manage our hand a bit. Okay, that's good. We can put that in the remote server. Uh, we spoke about managing our hand. If we just, <laughs> we do hedge fund Holloman, we're not really managing our hand now, are we? No, we're not. So we probably keep Holloman in hand for next turn. And we just get rid of one of these uh, three twos. This is soft hand management. I think with Offworld Office, it's fine. Like we rather score Vitruvius in the Iqua because it's safer around, I guess, around Hermes slightly. HQ is the mark. We're going to have like a scoring window on the turn after she like goes for the uh, Jay Chin Yo. This is going to be kind of expensive. Because the problem is we're going to have to resume this mana garm for that mana garm and then like the server doesn't make sense. At least if she steals a two-pointer, like we have the Blade of here, which means with the Blade of we can install Holloman on R&D and then move it over. That's cool. The Blade of Holloman is like kind of wild. It just gets you. Pinhole. I think she's pinholing 
the mana garden, but we have to respect the spin. So we're going to put back the off world. I think we're going to put back. I honestly think the hedge fund. But she's going to pinhole this mana garden on HQ. Yeah. We can't risk it because if she goes for the spin doctor, like she runs. But now she can set up next turn to go for that. Even this turn. She just runs, runs. Yeah, she can do it this turn. It's going to be expensive though. This was such a backwards draw. This is not good. The prototypes were good. Cool. She doesn't inside have this gatekeeper. It actually might be a surprise. The question is whether we use this Vitruvius counter for padding. I don't think we do. Two credits. This is really expensive. Yeah, she might have to inside job R&D. Because this is another uh, five credits. So she can't even steal Iqua. Oh, that's kind of sick. She can't trash Holloman. Wait, that's really sick. Can she afford this? She's going to get a click back. Okay. So only 40% of this is a bad access. That's the good one. Nice. One credit short. You don't want to, you don't want to, well, you don't want to steal. You want to stab. This is fine. Admittedly, if that was an agenda, like you bounce a gatekeeper and then it's really easy to last, rend the last knife. But now it's trickier. The question is, do we end up resing the gatekeeper? And we might. It allows us to control our hand. But then obviously in the near future, it's cheaper. So she can do credit, credit inside job R&D. It's just credit perfect to get in. Oh, daily cast. Wow. Okay. We have a window now. That's wild. Okay. So server two with the Holloman. I don't think we hedge fund. We want padding in our hand. We should have drawn first, actually. Yeah, we should have drawn first for sure. So she's going to be on two credits. I think we just click for credit here. And now we can haul him in the off world and jam the winning Aqua the turn after. Move, Vovo, no. Okay, she's on two credits. R&D's the mark. Carpe Diem's like the only economy card that gets you back. You do credit. Bravado. Haul him in uh, into off world is sick. It plays around um, Hermes pretty well. Do we want to plan our turn? Do we want to get a powers that be back? It's not too late. So we can install powers that be. That's not that good. Just get to game point. So Hermes bounced that. So we probably should just reinstall that. I reckon we actually do want to just get the mana garden with the Vitruvius tent counter. Just to get the double install here. Uh, we'll discard the Rashida. It's the cheapest, the trash. Move Vovo, no. So now she has to go for the remote server. Now, if this is a mana garden, which it looks like it is, right? Like, you have to do the double res. So you can fork this. She has brown ablative. Like, it's beatable. It is definitely beatable. Baya on archives. It is the mark. Very good. Oh, man, a tributary. Love a tributary. Matryoshka breaks tributary poorly. It's like three to four credits. Oh, Earthrise. That's good for us because that's not a lot of money now. So now we just do Ikawa in server two, credit, credit, I think. Can she break Brawn, Ablative, Managarm? Honestly, maybe. So she starts to turn on seven credits, right? Say she first click runs this. She can't cl double, triple click the Brawn, so she has to break the Brawn. So with the Matryoshka, that's four, five, six, seven. Then Ablative is eight. Then you have to double click the mana garm and then still mine to no, it's hard. It's hard. It generally is hard. Let's draw for an ice. Uh, that's not ice. Do we need more than that money? No. Let's draw for another ice. Okay, that's good enough. That beats inside job. So server two ablative on the front. We'll discard Rashida. And next turn, if the uh, Holloman stays, we can win. The one pinhole's already out, so we're fine. Like, all she has to do to not lose this turn is obviously get a Hermes bounce. That'd be sick. But she has to trash the Holloman because next turn, as long as we have six credits, we can never advance the Aqua. It's like such a wild line, never advancing five threes. Uh, it's sometimes easy to, like, miss that this is the game point. Normally, you play around Seamless and, like, double Seamless does it. But, um, yeah, it's Holloman. Triple blade of Holloman. It's just coming back. <laughs> oh, man. She has seven credits here, mind you. She has to deal with the Garm and Aqua, so you need to click in two. In terms of points, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's still 9 points in R&D. It's behind a 6 strength gatekeeper to Blade of and a Managarm, though. If we res this Managarm, though, are we okay? Estabrado, very good. So now we get punished by the bounce. Oh, on HQ. That's fine, I think. So it's a 1 in 5 here. 
MIC, you can click through. You can pay too. I don't think your money's worth a click's worth five credits. R&D is the mark. So if we trash the MIC here, it's strictly a one in five. If we trash the MIC. That's obviously a 20% chance. What happens if we fail? I think we just take the 20% chance. Thinking. If she has one click left, what can she do? She can run R&D. And then she can pay... She has an inside job. How many inside jobs does she have left? She has one. So if say the worst case scenario, she inside jobs R&D. Then she pays one. Yeah, I think we do do this. So now it's just a 20% chance. If she hits a Vitruvius bounce with Ikoa, we have to survive another turn. And then we did... Maybe that was bad because we ruined her defenses. Ah, oh, fine. Great. <laughs> There's agendas in there for sure. So Holloman stays. And that will take us to seven points. GG. Yeah, yeah, she does see it. Uh, move Holloman, no. Yeah, this card's wild. Score. Hey, good game. There was one in five there. I've played a whole bunch of games recently where my hand is all agendas against like Jay Chinyo, which is funny. But yeah, I think we had at least four, if not five agendas at some point. Uh, the Spin Doctor did come on time. We didn't draw that Spin Doctor. We're absolutely cooked. Fun. This deck is cool. Yeah, this deck is sick. Uh, check it out. Link in the description. This is all uh, Tuno's work. Um, big fan. I do like Ace a fair bit. Thanks for watching. See you in a bit. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you had fun there. It's been a while since we just did gameplay gameplay footage. It's always like deck dive stuff, and I'm trying to build interesting decks that I think are worth showing off. And a lot of times other people in the community are doing really, really great stuff. So shout out to Tuno for posting the list. And uh, I just had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to probably play this at Mansion Runner on the weekend. There's a kind of a competitive organized event. I think this one's a lot of fun. Thanks so much also for watching. Again, shout out to all these names and more. We have also the daily cast patrons and the support gives me the time to edit together, record footage, do all the live streaming, do all this sort of stuff on the channel. So any support is incredibly appreciated. Thanks so much. And with that, let me know what you think. Again, it's a format we haven't done in a while. We used to do like regular gameplay, just putting out half an hour videos. This is a game. And honestly, that might be a cool thing to return to. Let me know what your feedback is. Also, if you're watching this and you see I don't play perfectly, let me know in the comments, right? Like there's certain lines we miss. This is admittedly my first time with the deck, so I'm not going to play totally perfectly out of the gate. But um, I do think the ceiling is high on this one, which is always a treat to grind more games. That note, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.